Escapist, and welcome to the very special Escapist Pre Pax podcast. I'm Josh Vanderwall. I'm editor in chief here at The Escapist. I'm joined by. Hello, everyone. I'm Janelle Bonanno, editorial director here at The Escapist. Bienvenido, Escapado. Um, we have a very special calling guest today. If you want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I'm Liz Finnegan. I'm news and feature contributor at The Escapist. That's all I do. That's cool. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, Liz, um, you may be familiar with uh, Pixels and Bits. Um, she's been talking uh, a lot um, over the past few months about um, you know kind of classic gaming and uh, you know the role it's played in the industry and the things um, you know the importance uh, and influence that it has had. And if uh, you're not familiar with Pixels and Bits, <laughs> for shame, get familiar. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one thing uh, I'm really excited for, you know, this is my fourth PAX, and um, one thing that has always struck me about PAX Prime um, as, you know, a show and covering it, um, you know, as as a journalist is the fact that indie games just dominate so much of PAX. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have AAA developers um, showing stuff off, but... You know, the number of AAA developers by comparison to indie developers is very, very small. So you get a, just a huge proportion um, of the stuff you see at PAX Prime is usually indie. Um, you know, they have the indie mega booth, the indie mini booth. They have indie scattered around from indie publishers around the show floor and stuff. Um, it's a it's a very indie scene. Um, so uh, I, in case you haven't noticed, um, We've been talking a little bit more about indies recently. Um, you know, Liz mentioned, I think uh, she announced it on Twitter uh, earlier this week, but we're actually going to be pushing Pixel and Bits into kind of a retro indie uh, direction as well going forward. Um, you know, I, she uh, she's going to be, you know, our go-to indie person for PAX, although realistically, based on the appointments we have scheduled, we're all kind of the indie people at PAX. But I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. um, that's great. I mean... That's really great. Normally, you know, in PAX's past, um, we've really focused a lot on the AAA scene. And I think it's really great that we're in this kind of weird zone right now in the, uh, you know, timeline of releases where there's not really much to see from the AAAs. So we can really focus on the indie scene. Right. I mean, AAA kind of blew its load between E3 and Gamescom. Like at this point, uh, you know, we know pretty much everything they're going to tell us about uh, the billion games coming out in November that are going to eat every ounce of my free time for like six months. Um, <laughs> so we have now uh, doled out the appointments. Everybody has a list of games that they're going to see. Liz, is there one game in particular that you're just like really, really excited to check out? Battle Chef Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the only game where I reached out to the developer. They're one of the PAX 10. And I had seen it and I was like, I have to experience this. Like my life is missing something and it is apparently an action cooking RPG. Nice. So <laughs> I am so excited about that one. I That's love that there's action and RPG in a cooking game. Like <laughs> all of those things combined really excite me. Exactly. <laughs> But that, I, I took one look at it. It's like I have to meet these people, and at the very least, shake their hands and thank them That's for funny. introducing this into my life. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, that seems that seems totally fair. Uh, I mean, just, uh, you know, one of the best things about the indie scene in general is that they can do weird shit like a uh -huh. cooking based action RPG. Like, yeah. um, it's, I, I feel like Blizzard just they can't do that like you know can you imagine a diablo where you know instead of slaying monsters you're actually killing roaches in the kitchen while you're like preparing a, a... anyways um, i would play the shit out of that uh so <laughs> janelle do you have one game uh specifically that you are most looking forward to seeing i do but it's not an indie game <laughs> and well, so i don't want to be that person well it's too late the cat's out of the bag <laughs> Just be that person. <laughs> so I'm really, really, really excited to see Master of Orion. Oh yeah, I okay. mean, that's fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm super, super pumped for that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, for those of you that don't know about Master of Orion, um, the new one is being done by Wargaming, um, and it's a turn-based 4x sci-fi strategy game. Um, it, I mean, it's a reboot of the Master of Orion series from I think the late '90s. Um, the first one came out in '93. Uh. 
The first one came out in 93. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, totally. I think Mu 2, Mu 3, I think were later in the 90s. But, um, you know, it is one of the classics as far as uh, Space 4X. Um, and, uh, I mean, it, it has... Growing up, I mean, everybody I knew, for the most part, played this game. This It was really fairly pervasive, um, at least among the strategy game fans. Yeah. So, uh, the fact that they're rebooting it is really exciting for me. Exactly. And I've played a lot of, you know, sort of... 4X games that have come out recently, mainly indie ones, um, and, you know, they sort of were missing something, each of them. Mm. And I'm hoping Master of Orion being one of the quintessential franchises to spearhead the 4X genre um, really takes the lead here and does something fantastic. Well, that's that's our hope, Yeah, at least. and I mean, you know, <laughs> Wargaming purchased the rights from Atari when they went through bankruptcy in mm -hmm. uh, 2013. So I'm interested to see, like, they've claimed that they're going to stick very much to the original, just updating the UI, the soundtrack, and everything. But if you've loved the original, you should love the new one. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, that's uh, I'm really eager just to kind of see where it's at. I hope I get to at least get a little bit of hands on with it, just to see you know how how well it lives up to my memories of the game. Um, you know, after uh, the XCOM reboot, uh, I feel like that set a really high bar. Yes, <laughs> I was just gonna say that if they get like a fraction as close as you know Firaxis did with the reboot of XCOM, I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, there's actually a game, um, I noticed, uh, Liz is actually scheduled for it, um, and for some reason I did not pass her the preview code I got, um, so I've <laughs> actually been playing it, I apologize, Liz, <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, Chasm, um, did you, uh, did you get to look into that at all? Yes, yes, I actually, I have that. Oh, you, oh, you do have it. So I have been playing it, yes. Okay, awesome. I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I've just been having a ton of fun with that game. You know, oh it's my gosh, wonderful. I love it. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't. I, I don't. Some of the bosses are brutal to me. I don't. It's. I mean, they have easily recognizable patterns, but for whatever reason, I just you know can't get the timing right. Die thirty times, and it's like finally power through. So, um, so what's I, up with Captain? It's basically it's like an, an RPG uh, a, a combat platformer um, to some extent, with uh, you know definitely Metroidvania elements um, in re-navigating the map, finding you know getting new abilities that let you access new locations um, and stuff like that. So. So, I mean, it's a it's a super cool game. I uh, have been having a lot of fun with it, but I've been <laughs> splitting my time amongst so many games. I didn't actually get too far along, um, but uh, yeah, definitely something to look forward to. Uh, I I feel like Liz almost certainly likes it <laughs> enough. She'll be uh, she'll be writing about it at the show. Um, so I uh, hopefully um, you know or, or not hopefully, but I potentially won't have to. Um, for uh, the, the indie column, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, Binging Indie, it's a new series we're working on on The Escapist. Uh, so things we don't cover from PAX, uh, keep an eye on Binging Indie for uh, <laughs> for all of those uh, all of those games and details. Um, you know, we have, uh, I don't know, 70 appointments scheduled. Um, so oh my <laughs> there God. is very little <laughs> chance we will have write-ups for everything we see. Um, but, you know, over uh, over the coming weeks and, um, you know, the games that really strike us, we will uh, definitely be talking about more. Um, so uh, other than uh, other other than your top pick, uh, you know, what uh, what kind of games? I guess what, you know, as far as the uh, the various genres um, within indie games, um, you know, what uh, what are you most looking forward to seeing at the show uh, as far as, you know, just multiple games from whatever genre? Um, I'm definitely, I'm looking forward personally to seeing some really unique platformers. Yeah. And it looks like I, I have a lot of them scheduled for appointments. <laughs> and they're all so completely different from anything I've seen before, really. Mm -hmm. From parody to just you name it, you got it. So I'm really looking forward to what is being done with that. Yeah, so I've I've always loved platformers, even though I'm not right. necessarily the best at them. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's actually there are a couple really really interesting um, games that I've seen recently. I don't think we actually have an appointment for it, but Red Goddess. Have you heard of that? There's it has a longer title, but Red Goddess is how it starts. I started playing that this morning um and it's uh kind of another rpg-esque platformer uh, uh you know combat 
variable combat um, involved uh, depending you know you have uh, multiple forms uh, one is your combat form the other is kind of your navigation form so when you can right. dodge enemies uh, you know you, you don't necessarily have to fight but um, okay. really enjoying it it's got a really cute story it's got a, a really uh, adorable kind of aesthetic uh, you know the main character uh, is this uh, kind of fallen uh, god that kind of uh, came down to whatever planet she's on because of you know issues in the god world um, so uh, she's kind of her sprite is just like kind of this uh, you know a cute pixie like thing until Aww. she gets angry and turns into combat form and she's like this oh. really mad <laughs> it's it's really fun um, like a Hulk spin off. <laughs> Uh, and another one I, I saw recently, have you, uh, have you seen anything about Circa Infinity? Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I, I got a code and I started playing a few levels of it and, you know, it starts off, you know, very straightforward, very easy. And then after like three super simple levels, all of a sudden it's just like, oh God, what is happening around me? This is terrible. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of, you know, if, uh, uh, if you're not familiar and you're probably not, um, Circuit Infinity is, uh, you know, kind of sort of platformer, only it's fractal in nature. Um, so, you know, the, the idea of fractals is you can zoom in uh, closer and closer and closer and it always has the same uh, kind of uh, design or appearance or whatever. Um, so uh, it's kind of something like that. There's basically a circle that you're running around and you're kind of getting deeper into this circle. Um, but, you know, it's just layers and layers and layers and there's bad guys you have to dodge and kind of the whole trick is to not get hit by the bad guys as you're going, you know, jumping through the entrance to the next uh, next circle in. It's it's not easy. Um, I, I will say it's not easy. I'm it's, not sure how much more depth it has to it, um, but it's definitely a novel thing. Um, visually, it looks crazy. Yeah, too. it's, it's a yeah. little uh, brain melting, uh, visually speaking. Because <laughs> um, I was watching you play it, and I just couldn't comprehend what you were even doing. <laughs> um, so, I'm, uh, oh man, so many drop-in appointments, too. <laughs> Once so, we, uh, we're going to be doing this really oh, cool thing at PAX 2, which I hope we can figure out some way to write about it or something but we're going to be doing um we're going to be seeing a game that's on vr mm -hmm. it's called keep talking and nobody explodes <laughs> <laughs> and i'm really excited for this so i have to talk about it <laughs> oh um, my basically God. got the email about that i was so scared because that that was the subject line it was diffuse and bomb at pax keep talking and nobody explodes and i was like no no i'm not the guy for that <laughs> <laughs> honestly Honestly, when I read that email, I squealed in the middle of the office, just <laughs> squealed with delight. And I was like, this is happening. So keep talking. and Nobody explodes. One person wears the VR headset and they are confronted with a bomb. Everyone else who's in the team is around them, is not on the VR headset, cannot see the bomb, but has the plans for the bomb, <laughs> which the person in the VR headset does not. And everyone who is, so the person in the VR headset is the one that is the, you know, supposed to disarm the bomb. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is basically trying to talk them through it <laughs> without seeing what each other are seeing. And right. I am just super pumped for this. <laughs> one, I love um, group team building exercises. I, I think they're fun. So <laughs> I'm going to be excited for that. But also, I just think it's you know, a very interesting test case of the things that w are being coming available with VR, yeah. you know, you know, all the different ways that we can game that are beyond the current norm. Right. right. And, uh, yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest um, uh, benefits of, you know, VR coming out and people kind of developing for VR is it's it offers a, a whole new kind of experience, you know, um, you know, video games uh, on, on a TV from your console or whatever, like, sure, there's a whole variety of different game types, but it's more or less always the same experience of you kind of interacting with, um, you know, the flat screen, moving a character around and interacting with the world. Whereas with VR, um, you know, especially with, um, you know, like the, the Valve, Valve VR and stuff like that, where you're just like navigating a room, um, you know, turning around, uh, stuff like that. You know, I've seen a lot of demos where you're just kind of sitting in a chair um, and they're super cool. Uh, you know, like the uh, space sims and stuff like that. They're a lot of fun, but 
that, you know, I feel like the, the whole being able to maneuver around the room, physically speaking, um, right. to interact with the VR world is just a really cool idea. Um, and I think the, um, the whole, you know, uh, the bomb game um, is probably sitting in the chair game, but kind of, again, with the different experience entirely uh you know you can't really do that on a tv unless your friends are really honest and will look the other way i don't have those friends so <laughs> um, uh, but yeah it's I'm, I'm definitely excited for that um and uh, we've got a couple of VR appointments, um, you know, the gallery as well. I'm uh, kind of interested to see what comes of that, uh, though, you know, despite the fact that VR has a lot of potential, um, I'm still a little skeptical, you know, of, of the current development cycle. Uh, you know, it takes months, years even for developers really to get into the groove of working on a specific platform. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, it'll take a little time, but. You know, I, I think we're just going to see a constant progression of quality in these games. Um, so this is, you know, this is basically buying the first model, uh, you know, of uh, an untried operating system or something like that. Um, you know, you don't, you're, you're kind of getting it on the ground floor, but it's probably going to have issues. <laughs> oh, totally. And you know my perspective. I've said multiple times already, um, I think AR is going to be the next true step in gaming and mm -hmm. vr is still going to sort of lag behind a lot until it develops a following and a, and a great game source right um, yeah. have you tried vr yet liz no i haven't this is gonna be my first sweet uh, you so are set up for a vr appointment right <laughs> yeah awesome i think um, i have a couple of them uh, sweet. Well, I will. Uh, I will look forward to hearing what you think. <laughs> so it's definitely not for everybody, but uh, it's. I feel like the technology has come such a long way at this point that at least the whole like half of everybody that tries it has like terrible motion sickness. Oh my uh, God, most no. of that has been resolved. So, <laughs> so I will, I'll be the one percent. <laughs> Just really quick, you know, is anyone here an Assassin's Creed fan? I like the series. I've never gotten super into it. Um, you know, Black Flag was kind of the most time I sunk into it. And yeah, that was mostly because you constantly had it on the TV. <laughs> um, so it was either I play that or I just watch you play that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a fun game. It has some cool mechanics. But uh, yeah. What about you, Liz? That's the series that I play in between interesting games coming out. God, I hate to say it's it's not something that has ever really stuck with me, and I I can't even remember the last time I played one of them to be honest. Because now I'm I'm still still in my first playthrough of Witcher Three. I got that late, so mm. <laughs> I, and now with New Game Plus, I think that's going to be my in between go to. <laughs> nice. I only bring it up because um you know I know we're focusing on indie games, but that is the one major AAA appointment I have. Mm. Um, right. and I'm kind of curious to see what they have to say about it, only because. I don't know what's left to talk about. <laughs> um, it's coming out in October. We know a whole lot about it as is. Um, right. And I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see what new thing they have to say, if anything. Right. Yeah, I'm curious, right. you know, where the, where they can or will go. with Because the if they have any point. more announcements, honestly, it better be a big one. Yeah. At this point. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Assassin's Creed hit its pinnacle at uh, at Black Flag. Um, Dude, Black Flag was the it best. Was, it was a really, really fun game. Uh, I, again, didn't really care about the series at all, but I played the hell out of it, and uh, I, I had a good time. So. Black Flag was also an example of a game that had the best ever companion app. Yeah. Like, it was the first companion app that I actually <laughs> engaged with and played all the time. Right, and it's funny. I've actually, now that you mention it, there was, like, a big thing about companion apps when Next Gen first hit. Yep. Nobody seems to care about companion apps anymore. Nope. Companion apps and Connect like boggles the mind of developers. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like you know Fallout Four. I think is is going to have a companion app. Um, I I assume they're going to have a companion app. Otherwise, I don't know why they would have the Pip Boy thing with the case uh, with the phone slot or whatever. But anyways. <laughs> There's a lot of good they can do with that. Black Flag was a great example, and it's kind of weird that they just abandoned ship entirely on on the notion of companion apps. Even I think it was the Division 
if I'm not mistaken. Um, when I saw it two years ago at E3, uh, the whole thing they were touting was the companion app. You can have somebody on the couch offering cover fire or whatever through a companion app. This year at E3, gone. I was pissed about that. <laughs> so, I thought that was a great idea. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's cool. I can, I can appreciate it, but at the same time, like... I don't know. I'd, I'd rather be playing. Like, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so uh, back back to indie. Um, you know, I, uh, I had contacted by many many indie devs. Uh, got as many of them booked as possible, and some of them had uh, preview codes and stuff available for uh, for us to kind of get into the game um, in advance. So we didn't weren't just going in blind. Um, so uh, I've been playing as much as possible of as many of these games and Leap of Fate. I am really, really impressed with Leap of Fate. Really? Um, did you? Oh, sorry. I'm not kidding. This game is on the television like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> not even kidding. Um, did you? Uh, did you ever uh, hear of or play Hand of Fate, Liz? No. Um, I uh, I reviewed it earlier this year, but um, basically, it's uh, you are this character, it's, uh, and then you there's a, a map built out of cards face down. Uh, you move, mm -hmm. navigate around the map, land on a card, it turns face up. Sometimes it's a shop, sometimes it's a monster battle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, right. And then once, uh, you know, if you engage in combat, it's like a hack and, sl uh, hack and slash kind of uh, thing on Hand of Fate. Um, Leap of Fate, basically the same game, except instead of uh, hack and slash combat, um, it's got a kind of top-down um, uh, shooter, uh, kind of sort of bullet hell even at some awesome. points. Um, but magic bullet hell because you play a technomancer? Uh, yes, that is correct. Oh. Um, so, uh, but one That's of the everything. really... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, in Hand of Fate um, from earlier this year, basically you unlocked... Uh, as you progressed through the game, you'd like unlock new cards um, that would go into your deck um, for either to help you uh, with buffs or add harder enemies, stuff like that. Um, right. In Leap of Fate, basically, you're just uh, the whole point is just to get through this six. Uh, six level series of these card maps um, with the boss at the end of each level uh, as you unlock certain achievements by finishing level two finishing level three stuff like that you unlock permanent upgrades for your character um, that is the only progression in the game uh, you know anything you unlock during a playthrough goes away on your next playthrough so um, you know it's it's kind of it really incentivizes achievement hunters to go find uh, you know, go go accomplish these things so they get right. a permanent buff. Um, and the, I mean, the buffs are no joke. Like they're almost integral to actually being able to <laughs> get through the maps. Um, you know, you start off with four health, four shots, and you're just dead. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when you get a uh, two health um, perk, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big right, difference. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's something I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, it looks uh, it's still very early access, uh, and I've uh, there are two characters on, uh, in the game right now, and I mean, it looks like they're going to have at least two or three more. Uh, so I'm really really curious to kind of see how how this goes as they add new characters, maybe add new, um, you know, uh, series of levels. Uh, you know, you have the one through six here. Maybe they'll have another one that's like eight levels long or something ridiculous like that that I will never, ever beat. But, <laughs> and um, Leap of Fate is a roguelite game, correct? Uh, okay. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah. I've been, I've been recently trying <laughs> to get my head around the difference between roguelike and roguelite and i think i finally freaking got it <laughs> um, so here it goes wait i'm gonna tell you so roguelike <laughs> is any game that is quite literally like rogue it has all of the rogue elements mm -hmm. in it um roguelite is any game that is sort of like rogue but is missing an element or more Right, like having a permanent progression system, I think, makes it roguelite. Yeah, than because rogue -like. Uh, um, rogue like includes permadeath. Mm -hmm. That's one of its right. key uh, components. Right. So if you do not have permadeath in your game and you have some sort of advancement system, then it's roguelite. Boom! <laughs> Drop of the knowledge! There you go. Escape his podcast. We learn together. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so there actually, um, I've got actually two other games I wanted to mention real quick uh, myself, and we'll do uh, one last round of any final thoughts about what we're most excited for with PAX. But um, so, uh, Hacknet. Wait, dark. Wait, there's. Hold on. Let me make sure I have the the right name here, because uh, uh, maybe <laughs> Darknet is what it's called. Yeah, uh, it's basically, from what I understood, hackers the movie, the game. Um, so like they kind of keep the the really just uh, nonsensical, fanciful uh, kind of aesthetic of the mid '90s movie Hackers, which is one of my favorite movies ever. It's a great movie. I love it. it. Is. Uh, um, uh, also love to grief our tech guy Lewis because he hates the uh, hacker's image that we use as often as possible um, on the front page. Anyways, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't uh, haven't gotten to check it out yet, but I'm I'm hoping <laughs> I'm gonna get to fly through some kind of weird technical cityscape, and, uh, you know, keeping uh, you know uh, keeping our firewall active while the hackers try to, or vice versa, or whatever. But. I'm pretty excited to just see what what they did with it. Look, you had me at like hackers the movie. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll you don't play. have to sell it anymore. That's good. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we're good. Move on. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the the other one, I'm I'm really torn on what to expect. I want to keep my expectations reasonable, but it's uh, called Sub Level Zero, and it's a uh, it's a roguelike roguelike roguelite. Not sure which, but um, oh, it's a uh, basically descent. It's like the the nineties um, uh, ship shooter game thingy that I played way too much of. Uh, it was the one game that we were allowed to uh, play at uh, at school. Um, you know, on the on the land they had set up there uh, because you weren't shooting people; they were just spaceships. Yeah. And so um, it was. Uh, it was. It, not violent enough for my school to allow us to play it. So, dude, school computer lab games were the best. Yeah. So yeah, we played a lot of it, and I'm I'm really excited to see you know if if they kind of have uh, have the feel that the the nostalgia feel that I I would be looking for from this, um, as well as just kind of see what a roguelike descent actually plays like. That's right. Um, uh, a little weird, but I'm I'm eager to see what they've got. So. I'm just going to tell you what my greatest disappointment is. All right. Let's hear Another it. year has gone by and no one has recreated the new Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that game, people. Where is it? Where are you, Carmen? Where are you? Um, <laughs> I just I want to find you, man. <laughs> I, given the Master of Orion thing, I feel like just reach out to War Gaming, see what they think. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, start a petition. <laughs> there's a there's still a lot more we have to do to get prepared for PAX. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up just a little early today. Uh, you know, apologize for the briefness of the podcast this week, but um, keep an eye out over the weekend uh, and the coming weeks uh, for all of the awesome stuff that we're gonna see at PAX. Before we go though, uh, I want to do just kind of final thoughts on. What's kind of the most exciting thing for you about just going to PAX, um, you know, in general? Uh, Liz, do you want to start? Well, this is going to be my first one. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so, yes, I am a PAX version. So I think just getting to go in general, basically, yeah. <laughs> just <It's> a... <laughs> existing in that area is going to be the most exciting part for me. You'll, uh, you'll have fun. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, I started PAX... Uh, PAX was the first gaming convention other than Escapist Expo um, that I ever actually attended. Um, I mm -hmm. think it was PAX Prime 2012, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Um, but uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, and then I started the convention circuit the next year. But my first experience was PAX Prime. And it is to this day my favorite convention of the year um you know just because of the variety and breadth of the games that we get to see um the magic party also a pretty big factor in that magic the <laughs> gathering he means yeah it's uh they they do every year they do a big magic the gathering party where they preview some of the cards from the set coming out in september october whenever it's coming out um and uh this year it's battle for zendikar and they have announced full art lands and i'm really 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 excited I, I just that. hope they show us the full art lands. <laughs> I'm spirit fingering. I'm just saying. So what about you, Janelle? 
It's uh, this is like your billionth. Pass, this is like my so. billionth. I now, <laughs> I think, if my count is correct, this will be my twelfth or thirteenth overall packs. That's between packs East and packs Prime, right? It's, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so I think it's twelve. Um, but I love packs. Um, one packs Prime is in Seattle. Which is a city that I love, especially in August when it doesn't rain. Except uh, Liz, bring an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check the weather; it's it's definitely going to rain. <laughs> I, I actually made the mistake of packing with Philly weather in mind, and so then I was like, "Wait a second, <laughs> it's not right at all." Yeah, it's uh, based on what my phone was telling me. At least it's not even going to hit seventy like any day we're there, which it's I gonna, am it, perfectly it's okay with. Supposed to on Thursday, but by the time I land, that'll be gone. <laughs> but as I was saying real quick, um, you know, PAX is always that event every year that sort of renews my love and joy of being a part of the gaming community. Mm. Um, just seeing everyone there, having such a great time, you know, at PAX, it's not just about the show floor and the booths. They have tons of gaming rooms, mm -hmm. you know, retro gaming, old consoles, new consoles, um, magic, board games. I mean, there's just everything there. Yeah, I mean, you they have like a million it. square feet dedicated to just magic. And that's yeah, not even including and, the tabletop sections and everything and else. And just so. seeing everyone, you know, get along and playing and experiencing all these things together. Um, getting all my street passes. <laughs> so if you see me at a couch, sitting down on my DS, I am not working. I am getting my street passes. <laughs> Just an FYI. Um, um, but yeah, and I love it. I just, the atmosphere, it's just such a great time. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely something to be said. PAX is a consumer-focused convention. Um, and so, you know, when you're at an industry convention where it's just developers, publishers, and journalists, like, a lot of people at this point in this industry, they're a little jaded. Um, they don't, aren't, aren't just, you know, as wholeheartedly excited, uh, you know, for all the crazy cool shit we're getting. Dude, GTFO. Right. <laughs> if you are not excited and in working in the industry, get out. what are why, you doing? Why? Yeah, why? why? <laughs> I would say that to anyone in any I, job, honestly. 100% like, agree. What are you but, doing? Yeah, that's definitely one of the one of the really cool things about PAX is just this atmosphere of like passion and excitement for just being a giant geek. And it's like, that's, that's, you know, my kind of my, the mantra I live by and my life by is just like, be as big a geek as you possibly can. Um, and everything else will just kind of fall into place. So, right. uh, yeah, it's, it, it just, you know, a great community, great atmosphere. Um, and really, really excited to also see the cosplay because there's usually some really cool cosplay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all, probably the most abundant of the shows that I go to, um, on any given year, just as far as sheer volume of cosplayers, mm -hmm. um, and although I, I will say nothing against PAX cosplayers, but the BlizzCon cosplayers were kind of ridiculous. Dude, Blizzard fans <laughs> are hardcore. Yeah, so there weren't yeah. as many of them, but holy shit, those costumes, dude. Blew my mind. Like I would swear Blizzard paid for every one of those from like a <laughs> custom like blacksmith or something. I don't even know. Um, but uh, yeah, they get a little nuts. Um, but so uh, Does any, Blizzard pay for those? Uh, I can't imagine. Oh, like Blizzard, that. what's up? <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, in again, PAX this weekend, all three of us are going to be there. We're going to have Trisha Hershberger there as well covering for us. Um, and then uh, Maida Lashani, I don't know if you remember uh, old uh, community manager here. She'll be uh, writing a couple stories for us as well. Um, so if you kind of want to keep up to date on what's going on at PAX over the weekend, um, you know, writing articles takes a little time. Writing a tweet takes very little time. Um, so uh, our, uh, our uh, Twitter handles will be right below this podcast. Um, please do follow us if you want to kind of keep up on the goings on. Um, check out our coverage coming up this weekend and next week. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, feel free to poke us on Twitter. Always love interacting with you. Um, you can send us an email with any questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Um, uh, podcast at escapistmag.com. Also forums, Facebook comments, etc. Yeah, um, we love talking to you guys. We love hearing from you guys. Send us questions. And especially if there is something you want to know about at PAX, email us, tweet at us, let us know, and we will try to find it out. Yeah. if uh, I mean, if, if there's a game you know that's going to be there, just poke one of us, all of us, whatever. 
tell us what that game is, and we will make every effort to make sure that we uh, we check it out. So thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Vanderwall. Janelle Bonanno. Liz again. And we'll see you uh, next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>